Hey guys, this is Justin back with an engineer's perspective. And today I'm going to be talking about the Leatherman Surge and why I think that it is the king of all working multi-tools. So let's get into it. So first, let's just talk about what I mean by the, a working multi-tool. And that is, is that I feel that some multi-tools you've got pocket multi-tools or keychain ones, but you've got more just everyday, more like the Skeletool CX or the Juice, which is now discontinued, and some that are in between a working tool and an everyday tool like the, P, like the Free Series, in my opinion, where you've got a great plier head with more casual uh, supporting tools. Whereas in uh, these everyday ones, these are a convenient size and weight, but they've got a lightweight plier head. So a working tool is one that has internal tools that are meant to do heavy work, but also a heavy duty plier head. It's got both. So the Surge, is what I would consider to be the, the heavy duty class of multi-tool where the charge or uh, wave is what I would consider to be the, uh, I don't want to call it medium. Maybe this is like, uh, this is how I would say it is industrial duty versus just working duty versus everyday duty. Industrial, working, everyday. And so we've got the surge and the charge wave. And just for a point of comparison, you have the Super Tool 300, which uses the same plier head, but no outside accessible tools and a tiny bit different tool set. And what the surge is to the, the charge, the Super Tool 300 is to the rebar. So you kind of got a few different tools there as a point of comparison. Let's just focus on the surge for now. And a quick side note before we really dig into it is I did want to mention my preferred setup on the sheath. So that's my Super Tool 300, but their setup similar is I like to have this one with this type of snap with the two pockets. On the one side, I've got a uh, uh, Streamlight MicroStream USB rechargeable. So this light specifically, doesn't matter which side, if I can get back in there. And then a Sharpie, a mini Sharpie on the other one. Great for writing things down or more importantly, marking a cut. That's what I really like for that. Or writing down a measurement. And then here's the little tool pouch uh, for this guy, we'll get to that. So, First off, just do the classic run through the implements. So it's already open, so we'll start from the inside out. So we've got amazing needle nose pliers, regular pliers, regular wire cutters, hard wire cutters down there. Down here you've got wire crimpers and also uber hard wire cutter right up in the top there. That will slice through steel wire like hot knife through butter, I tell you. Um, internal tools and the scales, your big flat head, your small flat head, and an awl. And then you've got your bottle cap opener, uh, can opener combo tool with a wire stripper in there, right there. And then you've got your, your bit exchanger. So normally when you buy this, it comes with a number one, number two combo head and then the, your medium flat, but I tended not to use the medium flat and that combo one doesn't really doesn't work well on a number three and on some number twos. So I prefer the actual number two. So I've gone in with this one in my surge. Now for the outside accessible tools, serrated blade, with a sheep's foot tip, great scissors, Ooh. cut zip ties and 
everything else with that, your plain edge knife, and your Bosch T-shank adapter with the diamond file on one side. I think this is 600-ish grit or so. You've got the edge file here, non-diamond, and then your cross cut. And you can exchange this out just by scooching that over for any T-shank accessory. Um, and Leatherman includes with the Surge this little pouch. And in it I've got the wood saw, which I pretty much never use, but it's so small that I, I carry it anyways in this back pocket here that some people put their bits. So that's the tool set. Let's get into why I think this is the ultimate working tool or industrial working tool rather. So one is the plier head. As you've got the heaviest duty plier head that they make. It's the same one that's in the Super Tool 300. I've had uh, this plier head twist on me. I don't know if you can see that, how they don't line up perfectly anymore. So if I'm cutting very fine wires, like a uh, stranded copper wire, these two wire cutters don't match up just perfect and they can struggle a little bit. Whereas this I can abuse and it still holds that perfectly. I can get that fixed by Leatherman. I just choose not to. This thing's been to hell and back. Um, this thing's been used very heavily as well. Um, so the plier head is the main one. Um, this plier head in here I, and uh, versus the angle and thickness of the handles, I'd say you can work up to three eighths inch fittings is what I say. So if you're working with like the compression fittings with the ferrule, 3 eighths is probably the max you're gonna go with this and be real effective. Some people think more than that, but for me with appliers like this, that's the limit. Um, and that's a downside we'll get to later too. Um, I like the squareness of these is you can actually shove, if, let's say you cut a PVC pipe and you've got burrs in there, or even like some hard conduit. And you can just shove the square in there and then deburr it like that. I've used these to scrape on things before. I've taken this and if I'm prying up something, you know, if my hand, like if this was like a crate that came in, I'd just shove it in there and open up the crate that way. Uh, so the robust pliers, wire crimper works great. Uh, something to note about the charge series is see how these scales only, they stop here, so you've got kind of openness here. This goes for the wave too. On the charge, you see how closed it is up there with this style of scale. So it's actually much more annoying to crimp wires and you'll get a double crimp, just a soft one at the top because of those scales. So note about working with electrical on the charge. So robust plier heads, number one. Number two is this guy in conjunction with this. You get these amazing scissors, which are so handy when you're just trying to get some work done and you just need to snip something, like zip ties and whatnot. And uh, the compromise that's made on a tool like the, uh, the charge is that you can't, on a tool like this, put a saw inside of the handles. It'd be utterly useless. So they give you a file but they give you a saw on the outside and they still wanted to give you a scissors. So they gave you these guys. Now these are effective and useful, but they aren't even playing in the same baseball field as this guy. And having the option of a saw, if you need it through this T shank and an easy way to carry it in that little sheath there, you get to have the file and the saw. I just leave the file in all the time, but you get these outside accessible scissors that are very high quality. And uh, so getting, getting to have the scissors and the diamond file. So a big reason I choose the charge over the, the Super Tool 300 or the charge over the, uh, the rebar is that 
on uh, the rebar and the super tool is you have this classic double cut, single cut file. And I really prefer the diamond, for one, to be completely straight up with you, is like to use a nail file. Works a lot better. But also, if you have like a drill bit that needs to be sharpened, you can touch it up with the diamond, can't do it with the metal one. And it just, honestly, just seems to work better for my usage of that diamond. Um, I don't do this, but I've seen many people put different saw blades in there that suit their specific needs. So that's a huge advantage too, depending on if you're cutting a lot of metal versus wood. So you can have a metal saw versus a wood saw. So another reason why this is more of a pro industrial grade tool. And then, so I talked about the plier head, the scissors, the file T-shank, and then the last is the internal tool set, specifically this side. So I'm just gonna bring this guy in as a point of comparison. So one thing that I think is a small bit of a shame is that on the surge, when you bear down on the charge versus the surge, the surge is a lot more stiff, and that's because they actually used thicker steel when they did this. So you get a much thicker handle, but it's actually the same internal thickness. So you only get two tools, the same two on the one side for a much bigger tool. So that's a bit of a bummer. But do notice that the combo tool is much bigger on the surge than it is on the charge or wave. But this is the side we are curious about. Okay. So for me, I run into a lot of very big flatheads on like Hoffman boxes or junction boxes that are just, you turn at like 90 degrees to open it up. I need this big one. It's also, also much more robust for a pry if you need it. So I prefer it for that. And the other thing I run into a lot personally is control, control cards uh, for like, you know, automating a process. And this is the exact size of driver I need to take the wires in and out of those control cards. So, and it has the reach. So this works great for that. This works great for the boxes. Whereas on these guys, so you can see I've done the same thing with the dedicated one and two, but you don't get very good reach. And the, the one that comes from Leatherman, that flathead's too big. It's bigger than this, so it doesn't work for me. So it's either I gotta go all flat or all Phillips with this setup and that just doesn't fly for me because I need the Phillips. So I'm, I don't have the flat head that I need. And then this guy is, is a good middle, but it just doesn't do what this one does when I need it or that one. So I much prefer these two over this one and the bit exchanger because I don't carry bits with me. It's just this gets too bulky for me. So... That's those two versus that. I actually do like the eyeglasses uh, driver. I actually use it as a little punch most of the time, but I don't use it that often. And then the scissors, you know, these ones are way better and you get them one hand accessible outside. So that's better on this. And then a tool that is essential for me is the awl. Um, I use it a lot for if I've got a taped threads this is great to get the tip in there and you don't bust the tip off your knife to get out old tapes. You can retape it uh, for starting holes in wood. You can use that guy for it or PVC or whatever uh, for scraping on things uh, just to clean them up. Uh, yeah, different things like that. So, so in summary, I've got the more robust plier head. I've got the one hand accessible scissors or the outside accessible higher quality scissors. I've got the, the file with that adapter and I've got these flat drivers and an awl. Not to mention, it's just much more robust handles. So that's why it's the ultimate industrial working tool. So I, really quick though, I'm gonna cover the downsides of the Surge. And there's the two major ones for me. Well, we'll say three. So compared 
to its littler brother. The problem with the Surge is its weight and its size. So I never thought the Wave and Charge was small until I got a Surge. And then I realized that these things are just dandy little things and they weigh eight ounces. This thing's a beast, a absolute beast. It's giant, it's heavy, so much so that when it's open, it's harder to get my hand around it. It's not quite as fluid to work with as handles like this, or the best thing about the free is these are really easy handles to work with. So that's the sac two of the sacrifices, the size and weight. And then the other sacrifice is of course on the rebar and the super tool. You get that awesome 3D Phillips with all that reach. But for me, it's worth the trade-off. There's no perfect uh, worlds out there. So, so I choose the surge when the going gets tough and the tough need to get going. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.